What's going on everybody? My name is Zach, if you don't already know me, and this is my friend Noah. Hello. So I went to UC Irvine, which is a huge public university, and Noah went to Carleton College, which is a very small liberal arts university. We've known each other since high school and we've been friends throughout college, so we thought it would be a good idea to share with you guys six differences that we experienced between going to a UC school and a private liberal arts school. The first big difference that comes to mind when we think about UC versus liberal arts schools is class sizes. UC Irvine has 23,000 undergrads, and so I remember in my lower div gen chem classes and my bio classes, I would have up to 400 students in my class. That is a huge difference compared to the liberal arts, where, how big were your classes? Um, it depends if you're taking like a niche class or not, but anywhere from like 10 to I would say 40 people maybe wow. maybe maybe worst case scenario 50 if you're like taking intro to astronomy or something but. wow so your intro class of like 50 40 to 50 max was like my super specialized upper div classes <laughs> which were about 60 people so definitely class size was a huge difference do you want to speak on like your interactions with professors and how class size impacted yeah. that yeah so I felt like I got to know any professor I wanted to know personally. At Carleton College, a normal course is six credits, but they also have smaller courses that you can take that are about two credits. So I took one of those before, and um, that was a small philosophy course where we talked about music and such, and the, and the class size was about five people, five or ten <laughs> people. Um, and That's awesome. so that professor I took many courses with because um, I did I was a philosophy minor and I took maybe four courses with this okay. professor yeah. and I got to know him really well I could go to his office hours whenever I wanted and maybe there'd be one or two people waiting but it wasn't something like you'd expect at a, a public yeah, school. In public school. Yeah, um, that makes sense. I think for me, I would go to office hours for any professor that I cared about as well and I did get to know a good amount of my professors but you do have to go out of your way to get to know your professor because there would be office hours that I would go to and sometimes it would be 20 kids were there. And so for me to really get to know my professors, it meant I had to stick around that whole hour. And usually most kids would leave after like 20, 10 or 20 minutes after they'd ask their questions, but I would have like a huge page of questions and I would just stay and just keep asking and then get to know my professor. So that's what I did. It definitely takes more going out of your way, I think, at a UC compared to what I've heard from Noah about liberal arts. So that is something to keep in mind, but do know that if you go to a public university, you can still get to know your professors. You just have to go out of your way a little bit more. Yeah, one question I actually have for you, Zach, is yeah. were professors, uh, you know, were they okay with the idea of you sending them an email asking to meet? outside of their office hours and saying like, okay, I'll meet you then? Or was it like, these are my office hours, I will not talk to you outside of this? Hmm, that's a good question. I don't think I ever had that come up because what I actually used to do was I would schedule in the office hours as if they were class time because I just made it a requirement for myself that I was gonna go to my professor's office hours. So yeah. I never really experienced that too much. I have emailed professors individually and they did actually get back to me even in classes of 400. So. I don't know if that answers your question necessarily, but yeah. Um, so I might. I mean, at Carleton, you can email professors all the time. They always respond. It's okay. like it's like it would be weird if they didn't respond. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, some professors actually say like, "Oh, okay, these are my general office hours, but if you can't meet during this time, just let me know, and I can try to find a you know a time to meet you outside of these hours." There's a good amount of professors who actually live right outside the campus. Yeah. Like maybe like a five to ten minute walk. At the end of the year for computer science, the like the head of the the department would have a lunch at his house, which is like a 10 minute walk, and we would go, and you can like, you know, his wife's there, he's <laughs> there, cool. they have like food, and you get to know, you know, them really well. I wanna throw in one thing that I have an experience from my school actually, kind of similar to what Noah just said, which was, I was a peer academic advisor my junior year, and I actually got invited to the dean of the physical science school's house for breakfast with all of the other academic advisors. So again, going back to that theme that I was talking about earlier, at a public university, if you put yourself out there and you get involved in certain things, you will get the same opportunities that you would get at a liberal arts school. Like 
Noah getting to have dinner with his dean. It's kind of the same thing, but I just have to put myself out there more and get more involved to be able to do that. The second major difference between a public and private liberal arts schools is the majors and courses offered. At UC, we have so many courses offered and hundreds of majors to choose from. And so I think that's a big difference between UC and liberal arts is that we just have a huge amount of different options as compared to liberal arts. Do you wanna speak on what the options were at your school and if you ever felt limited by them? I mean, so personally, I didn't feel limited because I knew exactly what I wanted to do after my first year. We do have like all the basic options, you know, like econ, um, stats, whatever math you want to, stuff like that. Social but we sciences. didn't, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we didn't have like very niche majors. There was the option if you had something that you really wanted to do, you could kind of create your own major. Um, but I know that from a, like a, an experience of a friend, they tried to do that and they didn't think that you know the course that we offered would really fit what, what, what she wanted and it makes it more difficult um, because I think they have certain requirements when it comes to creating your own major. So there is flexibility, but it's definitely not ideal. With regards to courses, um, Carleton College actually offered some pretty interesting and unique courses. It wasn't just basic like, okay, you're gonna take um, Calc 3, whatever kind of thing. They have like some very interesting and cross, I guess, um, cross, cross discipline, academic, yeah, cross -discipline yeah. courses. Um, some of my favorite ones had to do with like learning about the um, like gladiators in Roman times. Another one was just like a classics class that had to do with um, like, the, like Greek time in from like 500 BC ish, and where you know the rise and fall of yeah. the Greek Empire. So like those were really cool classes, and it's not like there's a lack of interesting classes. It's just it's there's just probably not as many options as you would find at a public college. That's true. And also going off of that, I do want to mention that. UCs have actually gotten pretty good at giving like a good general ed catalog and so we also had a lot of courses like I love Greek mythology and Greek history and stuff like that so and I think Noah does too we yeah. both we bond on that a lot <laughs> like we want to look like Spartans from Real Greece quick. or something <laughs> oh yeah exactly See? so um I loved getting to take some of those courses as part of my general education requirement because UCs have you take three humanities courses, three um, social behavior courses, and then, you know, I was a chemistry major, so all of my STEM requirements met all of those general ed requirements. But it was fun for me to get to take six classes from totally different disciplines from what I was studying. And I did want to throw that in there because liberal arts is known for that and known for like having you study a lot of different things. And I feel like UCs aren't as well known for that, but they, I felt like they did a pretty good job of it. And that's actually a really good lead in to um, talking about majors at um, you know public versus private schools. Yeah, so that's our third point is major declaration. So I'll let Noah speak on this. Yeah, so going off what Zach said with having the the GEs being very diverse in a sense at um, at least at a liberal arts school. At my school, for example, we didn't have to decide our major, and we actually were encouraged not to. We couldn't we couldn't declare actually until the end of our second year. And this is because the school wanted you to try and and see if there's anything else you might be interested in, even if you go into the school knowing exactly what you want to do. I didn't. Well, actually, I thought I knew what I wanted to do. I thought I wanted to be a physics major and I actually didn't take a single physics class throughout my whole time at um, Carleton College. During the last term of my first year, I took a intro to computer science class um, and I knew right after that I wanted to be a computer science major. And even though I knew that, I still took plenty of courses, even sophomore year, that I found really interesting, even though I knew I wasn't gonna major in those. And I really like the fact that my school encouraged us to do that. I feel like I have a very cool perspective, an interesting perspective when it comes to tackling problems that are in my own field, which is computer science, because I've taken all these other courses, such as philosophy yeah. and such as classics. And I think, honestly, that's a huge con for going to a UC, is that you don't get that flexibility. And I actually remember feeling very pressured from advisors, from professors, everyone there, to know exactly what I wanted to do from the get-go. And it was much harder for me to change my major. I actually came in as a physics major as well. And then I decided to switch to chemistry and I actually had to already be making up a lot of coursework, even though I switched in my second quarter of freshman year. So at UCs, like they want you to know exactly what you wanna do as you start. 
And if not, you're gonna fall behind, especially if you're in a STEM major. I know a lot of people who wanted to study computer science similar to Noah that went to my school and getting into the major was such a struggle for them just because it's so competitive and it's very impacted and all the classes are really hard to sign up for. So there isn't that freedom of exploration at a UC that there is at a liberal arts. So I think that's a huge plus for going the liberal arts route. And real quick, another pro of having actually going, like going into your school knowing exactly what you want to do and declaring your major right away is that you can take more courses with that subject. So I feel like at my school, I could not take as many courses as I wanted to in computer science. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing because I do have this, what I like to think is a unique perspective when it comes to the work I do. Yeah. But at the same time, I, if I went to a UC, I would have been able to take way more courses in computer science and you know I could come out of college having more experience in, in what I love. Which is that cool. is true, but would you have even found it? Exactly, that way? That, that's that, I mean, the hard Exactly, question. you don't know. Yeah. Don't know. Yeah, so I guess, I guess there's pros and cons to both. Essentially, if you know exactly what you wanna do and have no doubt at all, then yeah, UC is a great option and honestly, you could probably graduate early if you play your cards right. But if you're not sure what you wanna do or you're willing to explore a lot of different options, then liberal arts is definitely the way to go. Yeah. The fourth difference is social life and the social structure of the school in general. So again, at a UC, it's a huge school, right? 23,000 undergrads is no joke. It's very easy to feel like one number in a sea of people. But what I found for me that worked really well was to sort of narrow down and make the school feel smaller for myself. The way that I did that was by joining clubs, getting involved on campus, becoming an academic advisor, a resident advisor. Those were all ways that made the school shrink and feel smaller to me because then when I was walking on Ring Road and passing hundreds of students, I would actually get hellos from a lot of people as we were walking by each other because I knew them from different communities that I was part of on campus. At a liberal arts school, the experience is very different. Noah, do you want to speak on that? Yep. Within the first week, we had my entire class on the same grass field, <laughs> etc., like different places, all there. And that, like, I, I saw everyone in my class. Wow. So that means that after that point, of course, you haven't, you might not recognize every face, but there's no way, after the first year, you'd be shocked to find, like, meet someone who's in your class here that you never saw before. You'd be like, oh, wow. You're in my class here? Um, I, I know everyone in my class yeah. here. So either you never came out of your room or you're lying. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, how, yeah. how many people were in your class? 500. 500? Yeah. That's it? That's like high school. Yep. Our, our, high, school our, same time. our high school is like what, like 450? Yeah, yeah, so it's per class? Yeah, so yeah. it's total. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so that's a huge difference. How would you say that impacted you, like going to school? There are pros and cons, of course, when, when you have a, a smaller class size. Um, the cool thing is you can go around and feel very at home, no matter where you are, because you know everyone. But in the same token, you if, if you don't find your your group of friends, you don't really have much in the way of options to go outside your, your class. You're like in a small town, and if you're if you don't find your your, your group, you're kind of screwed over a little bit. Yeah. So one small issue um, is that you have with, with 500 people in your class. If you somehow get a bad reputation, um, and especially if you don't deserve that bad reputation or somebody spread some sort of rumor, which I don't think was very frequent, but if, if that were to happen, like everyone knows, and you are knows. you are in this for the full four years, everyone's gonna yep. know that about you for the yep. whole duration. And Speaking from experience? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I stayed in my room, I was one of those people where you'd go, outside, you'd go outside and you'd see my face and be like, oh, you're my class here? Um, <laughs> you're either lying or you stay in your room. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Um, no, that didn't really happen to me, so I was fortunate with that. Um, okay. I mean, I mean, I, I don't. You saw it happen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you'd hear things and yeah. like you'd see that person all the time, so you just yeah. think of that rumor <laughs> or something whenever you saw them. It's it kind of it's kind of crappy, but you mentioned earlier something that I wanted to talk more about is the town slash surrounding area of your school. Um, for me, a UC like UC Irvine, Irvine's not like popping as a city, but there is quite a bit to do around campus, around the area. LA is only an hour away, San Diego is an hour and a half away. So like there's quite a bit that you can do there. 
And I think that experience was very different from Noah. Earlier he said it was a small town. Do you kind of want to talk about yeah. what that was like? Carleton College is located in a small town called Northfield. It's in Minnesota. And the population of this town is about 20,000. <laughs> um, so it's very small. And while the Twin Cities, so Minneapolis, St. Paul, is only like a 45 minute car ride, you have like one that's main funny. street and that's it. Yeah, so Noah and I were talking about this earlier. We definitely see a pattern where uh, most liberal arts schools are located in small towns, kind of in the middle of nowhere, whereas most UCs and public universities are located like in the heart of a city. So that definitely impacts like the experience and what you're able to do outside of school. The last difference we want to talk about is research, because any of you that are in STEM or really anyone who wants an internship or something to prepare them for work after college, this is gonna be an important topic to you. So research at a UC was honestly not very hard to get. I know that you know people are like, oh my gosh, am I gonna to have to email like hundreds of professors to hear back? Honestly, the biggest thing is to create a personal connection with that professor and then talk to them about it. So like I said before, going to office hours, getting to know your professors, um, reaching out, like that's a great way. Once you have that physical connection, getting the actual research is no trouble at all. I can say a little bit about that. I mean, I studied computer science, so I didn't really have to do any research, but I do have um, one friend who studied chem. What I do know is that we had way fewer opportunities to do research because we have way fewer professors, um, and I think it's the same thing like Zach said, in order to get these opportunities, um, you have to really get to know your professor. And I, I'm sure it might actually be harder to get the, you know, to be able to do research at, at Carleton because there's just oh, like not as research heavy. And I feel like UC yeah. schools are way They're more research very, heavy. Yeah, literally almost every single professor, at least I'm speaking for STEM professors, does research of some sort and are usually really passionate about it and want to get undergrads to help them with it. So uh, for me, like that was, that was really easy. That was an easy part of my undergrad education was finding research. And I think UCs just because there's so many professors and they have so much space in their labs, it's not really that challenging to find a research position. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to smash the thumbs up button. Shout out to my friend Noah for coming on and sharing his experiences with liberal arts. Don't forget to subscribe because I post new videos every single week and I will see you in the next one. Peace. Peace. <laughs> you beat me to it. <laughs>